The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened her up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. Always nice to join you here, out here on, on the, the end of the world here. Um, as, as you know, I, I, I really enjoy humor, and I particularly enjoy good, solid, funny Catholic humor, okay? It's out there. You, you have to find it amongst all the nasty stuff that's out there. But th this is a great story. One of Father's favorites is about a bear, okay? Um, and so, this, this one day, this atheist was walking out in the forest area, and um, he was admiring all of Mother Nature's creations, and all of a sudden, a big black bear jumped out and rose to his big nine-foot height and roared at the guy, and the atheist turned to run away, and he stumbled and fell and almost just instinctively yelled out, Oh, God! And at that point, everything just stopped. No birds flying, no breeze. The big bear was frozen there, except the guy was moving. And there was this big voice that came from the heavens. It said, yes, you called? And the guy says, God? Is, that, is, it, possible, is it really you? And the voice says, what do you want? And the guy says, well, well, well make, make this bear go away so it doesn't eat me alive, okay? Get rid of the bear. And the voice says, I don't think I can do that. Mm -mm, not given your beliefs. So the atheist says, well, well, well then, God, g you know, give me a 30-second head start so at least I got a chance to get away from the bear. And the voice says, mm, I don't think I can do that either. And so the guy then, in kind of a snarky attitude, says, well, why don't you just teach him some of those prayers you're so fond of? And God says, okay, I can do that. And zap, everything's moving. The big bear's on his hind feet. He walks up to the guy, puts his paws together, bows his head and says, bless us, O Lord, in these thy gifts. <laughs> See, now it's only Catholics that get that because, <laughs> isn't that good? <laughs> um, many, many, many years ago, it's getting more and more, um, I, I really had a wonderful opportunity. I didn't realize it then, but I certainly do now. A tremendous opportunity to live and study in Rome for two years when I was in seminary study, okay? And uh, one Fourth of July, I think it was my first year, one fourth of July, Pope Paul VI, that's dating me, huh? Pope Paul VI celebrated a mass for all the seminarians that were in Rome, and a lot of priests, a lot of cardinals, and he celebrated it in the Sistine Chapel. So you want to talk about high, high-level Catholicism. 
Here we were in the Sistine Chapel celebrating a mass by Pope Paul. And it was a magnificent mass, okay? Except the setting of the Sistine is so overwhelming that it kind of overcomes the beauty of the mass because you're there and you know, all of Michelangelo's glory and so on and so forth. And what you focus on is the focal point of the, of the ceiling and that is the two hands coming together. The one hand, the hand of man ascending, Adam ascending out of the clouds, and the other hand, the firm hand of God coming out of the, the, the higher clouds, and they're pointing at each other. And what's interesting is that, that this, this, this iconic vision of, of creation in, in this great artist's mind leads us to, to understand as you focus on those that the hand above, the hand of God, is not poison, it's not pointing in an accusatory manner. Visualize that, okay? I know we've all seen it, all right? It's not like this. It's not condemning. It's like this. It is a beckoning call. It is a call that's saying, come to me, okay? At the creation of the first humans. And that seems to be the theme of the, today's readings. As we go through both the Old Testament and then uh, uh, St. Paul's and then the Gospel reading, we, we see a situation where, yes, God certainly judges. We know that. He judges those who are turning from him. But God is also a very merciful God and beckons us. Isaiah in the first reading reminds us that it was the God of the, the Israelite people who delivered them from enslavement in Egypt across the Dead Sea, through the deserts. It was that beckoning call of God, come with me, I will bring you, okay? And even the psalm that we sang, the, the Lord has done great things for us. One of the most beautiful psalms where, where the Israelites, the, the, the Jews remember all of the great things that Yahweh, in fact, had done for them. And we get to the gospel story and it's kind of a, it's, it's a tricky story because there are two levels that we can talk about it, okay? We, we can talk about uh, Jesus wanting to preserve the law, respect the law. As, you know, he, he, he knew that Pharisees were always out to trap him. He knew that, okay? And he does so by cleverly saying, well, who's ever without sin, you cast the first stone, okay? You notice he doesn't say, is the law correct? But in the conclusion, we see Jesus in the twofold act of saying to the lady, okay, no one condemned you, so go. And we like that part of our Lord. That's the compassionate part, okay? But don't forget the final line. He tells her, and don't sin anymore, okay? And so we, we have this kind of duality in, in our teaching and our understandings of really trying to do good and trying to avoid evil and understanding that our Lord Jesus and, and, and our, our, you know, our Heavenly Father are always beckoning us to come to, to us. I truly believe, I truly believe that the, the, the most powerful of the three readings for today come from St. Paul. After all, he was our first great theologian, okay? That, from that beautiful, simple letter to uh, Fuliman, all right? Um, who was a wealthy individual, um, a slave had escaped, came to Paul, Paul was bringing the slave back to, to the owner, and he writes this, it's the shortest of all Paul's letters, it's only about 300 words, he writes this letter, and he talks about the importance of, in effect, not concentrating on today or the past, but always looking towards the future. He always talks about being reborn again in Lord Jesus. And as, as we heard in the reading, he says, all the things I have accumulated are rubbish. We don't hear that word too often, huh? The word rubbish. They're meaningless because I've now been reborn in, Paul, in, in Christ Jesus. Um, because of knowing that, okay, he understands that the righteousness comes not from anything that he himself, Paul, can do, but because of the saving grace of Christ our Lord Jesus. And so again we have this beckoning call. And um, in 
in, an, uh, in the conclusion to this letter of Paul, we find, I, I think, just, just a, a beautiful, beautiful statement. Paul tells us in anticipating his coming death and ultimately his resurrection, he says, you know, my life is not over. My life is a work in progress. I am not perfect. I am constantly working at it. And he says, what, what we have to remember is this. Forget what lies behind. Forget what went yesterday. Strain forward to what lies ahead. Keep focused on that future. Keep focused on that, 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 that beckoning call of our Lord and our, our Heavenly Father in wanting us to come to them. And it's a beautiful thought. I'm going to close with one of my favorite prayers. It's, it's the um, soul of Christ, the anima Christa uh, of St. Ignatius. And, and it is just one of the most powerful prayers I think a human has ever written. Take, Lord, receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, my entire will, all I have and call my own. Take, Lord, you have given all to me, to you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Beautiful prayer. Amen.